and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am your co-host, TMD, and we would like to thank our sponsors for the evening. That's going to be Knox Pro Entertainment, located out of California in Van Nuys. That's right. If you want to learn from the best, you want to train with the best, to be the best, all you got to do is go to Knox Pro. Log on to the World Wide Web at www.knoxpro.com. Big Keish, how you feeling, man? Man, I'm exhausted again. I'm home, back in L.A., man. Uh, just came back from uh, from London. Yeah, uh, so big shout out to the fans out there in Edinburgh, um, U.K., Scotland. It's kind of similar, you know. And uh, another Monopoly events where they had the uh, Comic Con Scotland, so what they call it, it's one of their other Comic Cons. And uh, you know, again, man, the fans turned out. It was great. I messed up from the time change, you know, eight hours ahead, you know, from the West Coast. And uh, so I'm here. I made it. So I, I got to say this big shout out to uh, my people's at Gimmicks Promotion. Mm. Uh, promoter Jared my Bird for always looking after you. you. So I'm home, Joey. I, I'm, I'm exhausted, but I'm home. Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to ask you about this picture that I saw. It was an awesome picture of you and Mick Foley on stage. Yeah. And, you know, they did that, like, reverse band shot. And that place was... And they were, it was, it looked like jam packed, like sold out. It yeah, was, it was. You know, when I say they came out, man, uh -huh. they came out and it was good to see Mick. You know, as always, uh, he's just, uh, he's just a pro. It's fun to do those type of QAs together. Uh huh. You know, because we kind of basically started together back in the day in, uh, in Texas, you know, for the Von Ericks. Uh, he was there. I was coming through back in 86, 87 ish. And, you know, to be able to have those QAs and, you know, let the fans, you know, you know, hear the uh, the person, you know, rather than just the wrestler, what they see on TV. It's like a, almost like a big living room of family mm -hmm. just chit chat. So it was great. Uh, since we're talking about Mick Foley, uh, what's a what's a, uh, one of your uh, uh, any funny stories involving Mick Foley? Uh, any fond memories? Uh, uh, <laughs> Mick is. Uh, uh, Mick is an original dude. You know, I'll tell you one thing. He saved all his money. You know, back in the day, he's a, he a, a very uh, low-profile type of cat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was very hungry for, for the industry when he came through, man. I think that, you know, he already had a plan and uh, figured stuff out early in his career. You know, because, you know, back in the day, me and Mick, we didn't look like everybody, you know. Um, and so he, he was very, very smart as far as learning the understanding, the industry part of it and how to work himself into these programs. So, uh, it's the hustle. That's all we, we talk about really is when we see each other, you know, 30 something, five years plus, and, uh, you know, we, we see each other, you know, constantly now. And it's just a, it's a beautiful thing to be able to see your friend from back in the day, still at it, still doing what he loves. And the people are just uh, loving Mick and respecting Mick even more. So, you know, I, I've seen him. He looks great. He lost a lot of weight. You know, we were talking about that, you know, about health-wise, you know, for us to, you know, the after effects, you know, me, my hip hurts when I'm walking too long, you know. But I know I got to keep it moving to keep it kind of lubed up and oiled up. I know what works for me. And uh, so he, he looks great. You know, he dropped some weight and he's moving a lot better. So it's fun for us to kind of just, you know, uh, sit there and encourage each other to, you know, like we, we, we got to live. That's what I, I said to him before I left uh, uh, the last Comic-Con. I said, man, it's good to see you, man, but we got to live. You know, keep up the great work. So uh, that's, that's uh, you know, that's my, my thought on, on the legend, the hardcore legend, Mick, man. He's always been a friend of the families, and he'll always be a friend of the families. Um, was his uh, 1997 um, uh, Hell in a Cell match with Undertaker, the bump off the top, did that uh, influence you to take the bump you did? Oh, most definitely. At Hell in a Cell? Most definitely. You know, I mean, once again, that's how uh, how smart this guy was. You know, even though... When you're figured, figured out not to go over, you always got to come up with something 
that it doesn't matter if you go over. You're going to do something so people can remember that. And when I've seen Mick, uh, you know, take numerous falls from the top, and if you notice, uh, Hell in a Cell, between him and uh, I think Shane McMahon, we're the only ones when you see these highlights, they kind of show Mick a lot. The different highlights of him coming through the Hell in a Cell on the thumbtack, damn near, you know, decapitated his body. Mm-hmm. Coming from there, you know, again with Taker, because that's his deal, the Hell in a Cell. Onto the announcer's table, you know, there's no give there, right? It's just all flesh and bones, man. And then, you know, I, so I learned, I said, you know what, this guy here is smart. He's still getting residuals, getting paid for it. Every time you see Hell in a Cell, it's 30 years later. You know what I mean? And he's still, like, they still show those highlights. And so, you know, uh, he had a lot uh, for me to make up my mind whether or not I wanted to take this bump or not. So I'm glad I did because I still get paid residuals for it. Yeet. Yeet. Exactly. Getting that coupe. Um, yeah, each one teach one, right? <laughs> Big well, bang, take one. little bang. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the new yeah. shirt, the Yeet shirt. That is awesome. Oh, man. I didn't get a chance to really see the... Uh, uh, Bad Blood? Bad Blood, Oh, that's man. what we're here to talk you know, about, Baby Cake. I'm sure you're going to give me the, Ooh, the 411. Man, oh. How was it? Was it... Was it all right? Was it right? Was it good? Was it bad? Uh, well, know? I'll tell you what. The world is on fire over all the returns that yeah. took place at Bad Blood. So, of course, the main event yeah. uh, was, of course, the American Nightmare, uh, Dustin Rhodes. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Dustin Rhodes. Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. Shout out to Dustin. That's right. And uh, Roman yeah. Reigns versus Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu. That was the main event. Mm. And, of course... The world saw it, the return of your son, Jimmy Uso, in the main event as well and had a, a little thing or two to do with the finish. So we saw... Well, thank Ro- God. Ro- God. God answered my prayer. <laughs> yeah. God forbid I even say anything on social media. <laughs> you know, everybody thought that Jimmy was in the hospital. <laughs> he was... All I said was just send a prayer for my son. That's it. As as any father would would give any any son, you know, just pray for my son. That's it. I didn't say nothing. He was in the hospital. I didn't say, I just pray for his, his health. That's what I would say. Oh, the hell. I got so much slack for just a father trying to send some prayers for his boy. And then, boom, I seen the highlights when he come through. And really, when I seen that part there, mm-hmm. all I was just r- really listening to was the fans. That damn building erupted. Yes, sir. It just erupted. And so it kind of, and then it, it, that, that type of feeling and that type of sound, let's go way back three years ago now. It's almost when Solo Sequoia came in for Roman. And then here it is. So I'm watching this. And so as a proud father, oh, come on. Mm. I'm always going to talk about my kids out there on social media. So yeah, so it, it was a big night. I'm glad God answered my prayers to give my boy, you know, strength and health to make the right decision, you know, because wrestling's always going to be there. But your health, you know, understand 200 something days getting hit in the back of the head with chairs and, you know, getting dropped upside down on your neck, your vertebrae. It only takes 30 seconds, 30 seconds to put your ass in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. Is it worth it? Hey, some might say, wrestlers might say, we crazy. You know, but at the end of the day, you already know what you signed up for. You already know. And so the choice, that was my thing. Just the choice is yours. I'm just going to pray for you, for your strength and health. Yes, and sir. I, I said, don't even tell me if you're coming back. I don't want to know if you're coming. I, I want to see it or I'll read about it. And, of course, out there in London, man, that's all people came up to my table. So happy Jimmy came back. We're so happy Jimmy came. Blah, blah, blah. This and that. I said, man. Oh, I was, thank you. Thank you, Lord. He looked great. And not, not only did he help in the finish, speaking of pops, 
he, him and Roman embraced at the end. So mm. that shows he is aligned with Roman once again. So yeah, the the, the people came unglued for that that yes, part right there. Uh, they wanted to see it. So now, so big bank took little bank. That's right, sir. So you know the people are getting what they want. They want the OG reunion. Yeah, they want the OG bloodline. It's it's loud and clear. So uh, we had that happen, and that's then, gonna be awesome, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know yeah. th- things are sh- uh, shaking. So uh, shaking and bacon. Not only that return. We had the final boss return as well, The Rock. Mm. And, you know, anytime he comes back, he just moves the needle. Uh, oh, you, that- you, you already know. I think somebody mentioned to me over there in the Q&A in London, I mean in uh, Edinburgh at the Comic-Con, what was my thoughts about The Rock, you know, coming back? And that's how I found out. And then, of course, on Instagram, I said, any anytime the final boss comes back, it's good for business, whether you love him or hate him. The bottom line, I know this, is that TKO loves him. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? And, yeah. you know, Rock is just, you got The Rock, you got, you know, you got Roman, you got Jimmy came back. You huge, know what I mean? I, I mean, you know, Solo and Jacob in the main event. That is awesome. Yeah. It's it's like, come on. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's just so, so uh, exciting to watch the family up there doing it, you know, but doing it on a high level. It's, it's almost like they're competing amongst themselves. <laughs> like how, how many how many main events can they main event? There ain't nothing wrong with, you know, them main event. As long as you drawing money, hey, mm-hmm. by all means. But I guarantee you the day that that's not moving the needle, well, as they say, whatever is good for business, the wheel turns. Yes, sir. But we'll see. I, I doubt that wheel's going to turn for a minute. Well, speaking of the wheel turning, it turned for Cody Rhodes that night after the match. Yeah. Uh, he was out in the back. And I love the way they did this. Um, Kevin uh, Owens turned on uh, Cody Rhodes. Mm-hmm. And there was no camera crews around. So the only footage that made it was footage from the fans. I thought that was really interesting. And it, and it looked really, really great. That's so, going to be great. So... So he he uh he turned on Cody so, Rhodes. Okay, so, so Kevin went heel. Yes, sir. So I figure, man, it, it looks like it's shaping up to be the Rock and Roman, uh, possibly because before the Rock left uh, the ring, I mean, because when he came out there, did his his deal. Yeah. Before he left, he threw up the three, and there happened to be three people in the ring right there. It'd be Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, and uh, Jimmy Uso. Okay. So who knows what that number three meant? We don't know who he's going after, but I'm just gonna assume. Call me kooky, call me wacky. I, I think he's gonna go with Roman. We're gonna get the match that we didn't get at WrestleMania 40. Yeah. And now that that Kevin Owens turned on Cody, like who would Cody go against WrestleMania coming up in Vegas? I figured they're going to go together. Um, I like how they're taking care of the champion like that. You know, I mean, because he still has to be featured somehow, you know, and to be able to do that, you know, it's it was very smart uh, because now, you know, I, I didn't get to see the, that footage of, Kevin always jumping, uh, turning heel on Cody. I'm assuming it was great. Uh, and so, you know, to have the champion be featured in a match like that on a single uh, uh, a match is is very, uh, very smart on, on, you know, the company's part. And uh, the bloodline, the beautiful thing about the bloodline, you don't, you don't even have to say names because there's so many of them out there that who, whatever, whoever, they decide to pick on whose side or whatever the case it may be, it's still going to draw money. It's still going to draw entrance. And everybody that's in there, everybody's going to be taken care of. Yep. Meaning you're there, it has to be on the main event, main event level. You know, so, yeah, that's that's great. You know, I'm, I'm, I almost feel like, man, it, man, you know, I, I would have thought, and this is just my weird mind, like, just, I'm always thinking when people go left, I'll go right. You know, during that time, it damn sure would have been nice if Cody turned on Roman. You know I mean? You got two big baby faces there. And I mean, Cody's been that baby face since Roman's been gone. And then to be able to come back together, you can almost, you know... 
if you're seeing that that I seen the little highlight videos they put up of Roman's entrance, it, it's it just, he, he puts out that aura, aura. He puts out that vibe to like you can almost feel coming through the TV how over this guy is. And this was once a guy that people hated his guts. But as you can listen, man, it's so you got the champion and you got a guy that lost to the champion making his first debut coming back to wrestle and it was freaking the building erupted. So I thought, man, it's going to happen right now. I didn't tell anybody, but in my mind, I said, this will be the perfect time for Cody to switch up. So now you switch up. You have Cody and Roman come back and, right? Boom, Roman's already a baby face now. Boom, the belt drops to Roman. Mm -hmm. Boom, here comes the rock. Mm. Now we can continue on. You guys still got a lot of people in the bloodline and that can either do a war games or whatever the case it may be. Right. But I just, I, I think, for me, I think that. Because Cody, to me, is kind of, you know, sharp dress. He, he just, he, he just, you know, he's a baby face, but he's one of those guys that you can hate real quick. You know, when you see him on TV, his promos, like, you know, like, almost like arrogant. He's a nice guy. Mm -hmm. but arrogant, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I know I look good. That brings me to my next question, Big yeah. Keish, because uh, I wanted to ask you this. Um, I wanted to get your take on a 1 to 10. Where would you rate uh, his work thus far as a babyface? Because uh, Kevin Nash actually had come out uh, recently, and he had said uh, he's not a fan of... Uh, uh, some of uh, Cody Rhodes' uh, babyface work, as such as like going to the ring, kissing babies, taking pictures with yeah. fans on the way to the ring. Yeah. He was saying more like, you know, as a babyface, and especially the champ as the company, you should just be able to go straight to the ring, be more intense, less mm -hmm. kissing babies, less uh, taking pictures on the way to the ring, yeah. be more serious. So on a 1 to a 10, I wanted to know what your opinion was on his babyface run. Where would you rate him? Well, you know... Uh, the I don't know. The babyface ran from uh, one to ten. I think it's a six. Okay. Uh, he's he's trying so hard to you know what I mean that ba to be a babyface and to be a babyface champion of the company. That, that's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of you know trying to you know you know do, you shake hands, kiss babies, and and all that stuff. And then you know in the meantime, it's like. You know, you got so much responsibility on your back, you know, as being the face of the company. You know, you're you're trying to, you know, be the best uh, role model, I guess, or champion uh, during the time. And uh, you know, I again, Cody's a great worker, but for me, I just feel like he can be a better heel. Mm. I feel that. He can be a hell of a heel, you know, and he's that guy with the suave look, you know, and 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 he's a white boy. <laughs> Come on, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, he's got the suits on, you know, and it's almost like a million dollar man type of vibe, a new era of million dollar man. Mm -hmm. But just that heat seeker type of, you know, when I tell you to do something, do it, you know. Right. Here's here's your tip right here. Throw him. 50 cents or something. Uh -huh. You know, that type of, just because it's so easy when you look at, for me, it's so easy to hate him. <laughs> like when you're watching him at wrestling, you know, mm -hmm. he does a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think nowadays, man, we need to, you know, to get heat, boy, you got to know how to move theatrical. You got to know how to move emotional people mm -hmm. to get them in that vibe and, you know, where you're controlling these people by, by just even a stare down. You have a stare down, and you got the whole building erupting. Mm -hmm. Come on now. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. That's where you're different from the rest. But, yeah, I I, I, I think, you know, Cody's a – I don't think he's comfortable being a bay face. I think that, you know, see, he does everything, like, fantastic in the ring. Mm -hmm. But it's just something about that kid, man. I just – the day he turns uh, heel, man, I'm, I'm going to be really happy for him. Because now he's just going to let loose on everybody. That would be interesting.
Yeah. Um, speaking of turning hill and letting loose on everybody, um, man, what a what what a difference a week makes. Because last week we were talking about how it was awesome. Braun Breaker was showing respect yeah. to the new Intercontinental Champion, your son, Jay Uso. Hey, yes, man. I want to thank everybody. Well, when I posted that, you know, that the last episode up. Uh huh. A lot of love, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. thank you. I read everybody's comments. It was about time. Yep. You know what I mean? And yep. I mean, I, I'm just, as a father again, uh, uh, I, 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 you know, I got tears just watching, watching them just one, two, three, and then finally they giving them the strap and so forth. It was just uh, emotional for myself. I'm sure it was emotional, emotional for him and his uh, personal his family, immediate family. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it was emotional for Jimmy and Solo, his brothers, and you know his cousin Jacob. Just you know the Anoa'i Fatu clan. You know, and especially you can definitely feel the love from the fans. So, you know, continue on, continue on, eat and uh, stay healthy, man. We're, we're going to talk about that promo in a second, but I wanted to backtrack to Braun Breaker here because. Uh, one week uh, he's putting out handshakes and saying yeah. how much he respects him. Next week he's he's delivering spears and you know uh, oh. saying that he wants that rematch. Uh, I thought it would have been a little awesome if they had uh, let it go a little bit longer, like tag him up a little bit, maybe at a big event, maybe he turns on him. I don't know. But uh, what do you think? Do you think it, it could have stretched a little bit longer, or do you think uh, no, the time is right right now? Let's go on a program with both of them. Well, hell, I this is just me, man. Isn't that backwards? I mean, so it sounds like he, Braun, obviously if he's spearing Jay, he's turning heel against Jay. That was a way to put some heat on him. Um, I mean, hell, I probably would have done it the night he lost. As we were just talking about this on the last podcast, it was like, if, you know, what better way to get some heat than to take away the celebration? What better way? I mean, this is just me. You know, sure. again, I, I don't work, you know, for the company. You know, I'm just a... I'm and just I a, asked the questions. It's not I, I'm like I'm just you better wrote this question to ask no, you. No, everything, yeah, yeah. everything's not scripted it's here, man. It's off the top. It's off the top, exactly. So, and uh, yeah, this is just my humble, humble opinion. Which you've earned. You know what I mean? Exactly. And if anybody don't think that, well, you, you, know, you know where to find me. And so... Yeah, but we'll see. You know, I, I guess I got to go back and watch it because if he spirited of what, one or how many, one or however it's many a few times, times, I believe, yeah. A few times. Was it good? Did it, I mean, I don't know. I saw, you know, I got to go watch this thing and see what it is. But I'll definitely talk about it on the next podcast. Yes, sir. You know, so, but hey, good luck to Bronton. Hey, you t- you want to switch up heel and get ready to be, you know, get ready to be called all kind of names and people just booing your ass and, and all that. It's going to be a night off for you, kid. Um, so let's, uh, we're going to wrap up with, uh, I want to talk about this promo that Jay cut, uh, his okay. first promo as the intercontinental champion of the world. First of all, he comes out to the ring with your grandson. How, how is it seeing your grandson on it's, national uh, uh, television? I'm, I'm always happy. I text him tonight when I <laughs> seen the photo. You know, you know, Keith. I don't know. I, I thought about this. You're in a predicament that I, I don't think many fathers are. Like, you've produced three successful, famous children. Like, name yeah. any other father in any other industry who's done that. I can't think of uh, many. But, uh, yeah, you got a lot of, like, uh, children. Uh, who knows how many more uh, superstars you got in the family. Um, you know, we, hey, I just produced them, meaning drop the seed. <laughs> yes, sir. You know what I mean? And uh, listen... You know, to be able to see these kids go out there and do it, I I, I can't take credit for that, man. Uh, you know, I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, the num the the bloodline, the name is always going to be, you know, never changed. Uh, but as far as you know, you know, getting the success, you know, it's one hundred percent them, man. You know, yes, I was always a quiet sideline coach when asked. You know, I wasn't you know that type of person to you know like do this, do that, do that. Only when my kids ask, I will. You know, cause it's uh, that way for me is it kind of like see how they're growing. And man, you know, after 16, I think it's 16 years of they're going on 17. You know, I, they have they have a they have had a great career. It was a long career. And, you know, their legacy amongst them, too, as the greatest tag team uh, ever in the history, one of the greatest tag team 
you know, in the history of professional wrestling at WWE, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a good feeling, man. You know, right there where we're at, you know, you got the wild Samoans and the head triggers and SST and the list goes on. And now, you, you know, you see the Usos and then you got the single, you know, part of the family, you know, Yoko, Ivana, you know, the rock, Dwayne, you know what I mean? And then here comes, you know, Roman solo, Jacob. <laughs> yeah. So let, you know, and them boys, they, they got their own kids too. Yep. And so by the time, you know, this is how they start. It's like just putting them in front of right. the camera. Yeah. And, you know, Jace, my, my grandson, Jace, man, he, uh, Jace, son, he's the baby. Man, he, he just looked like he, he's a natural in front of the camera. He's just a natural. As soon as his father vibes out, you can see him. He's vibing out. like He knows the camera angles. He knows what is. He's not that. He's not that green type of student where uh, doesn't know where to look for the camera. He's right. smart, you know. And I'm sure his pop leads him the right way. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm proud of my son, Jason. So Jay uh, comes to the ring, cuts a very emotional promo. Uh, very to me, just as a fan watching, I felt it was very authentic because he didn't come yeah. in straight off the bat talking about he's the greatest in the world and this the, the, the typical promo, if you will. Yeah. Um, I thought it was very authentic the way he, he paced it out, and I could feel that he was very emotional because this was his first singles win. Yeah. And um, there was somebody in particular who really didn't understand the promo, and I wanted to get your thoughts on this. This is um, Vince Russo, former um, head of uh, WCW and former champion. Uh, let's yeah. see. This is uh, going to be his words. Uh, I'll read you uh, the context first. Um, Former WCW champion Vince Russo says he could not understand why Jay Uso became so emotional during his first segment as WWE Intercontinental Champion on Raw. On Legion of Raw, Russo said, I don't understand this. The dude was so emotional he could barely speak. I don't understand. This is a job. The title is a prop for the life of me. I don't understand how these wrestlers get emotional over winning a prop. Jay Uso has been around forever, forever. Quote. Okay, well, you know, let me answer that. And if you listen, uh, Russo, first of all, you can go f yourself. All right? <clears throat> you don't have the right to even put my son's name in your mouth. You don't have a right to talk about somebody that has laced up boots for 17 plus years, broken bones, broken body bones, sweat, tear, and blood. In that ring, sometimes 45 minutes, ladders, chairs, match, split wide open. You don't have a right to open your mouth of what you think is, is right for a person when you finally win this so-called mother prop that you think. When was the first time, when did you ever get your ass in there and run a match 45 minutes. And anybody can pull up a pencil and write your, your, your fantasies of what you think an angle is supposed to be. But when you talk about my boy, when you talk about you didn't understand, you got right, mother You didn't understand. So if you got a problem with my son, if you got a problem with him winning the strap, the so-called prop, what your ass call it, Cause that's what you do. You 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 that you that damn you that damn computer gangster, the one that the, the one that want to talk behind online. Why you you letting your fingers do the talking through your iPhone or whatever the case may be? Hey man, step up, step the f up. Let's do this. You ain't even gonna have my boy there. Me and you, man. Me and you. So anytime you want to open your mouth about the Anawai Fatu clan and you try to disrespect what my boys or what my family has worked hard for 75 plus years, man. This kid here busts his ass for 16 years, man. So you would never know that hard grind, let alone not being home for his kids, you know, traveling one side of the world to the next side of the world to do what he's got to do. There has to be a purpose for something. 
what is it? What is it with you trying to, like, like, like you just trying to knock those that, a moment that, that means so much to a person that's well deserving. So I ain't hard to find, my man. You want to link up? You know where to find me. Keep my family's name out your mouth, especially my son. Didn't mean to get you hot, Big Keish. Don't talk about my family, man. Uh, yes, sir. Holy yeah. moly. Don't talk about my family. So I, I tell you what, um, I mean, what a uh, perfect, uh, you got a busy schedule. And you know what? Let me say this, too. Yes, sir, absolutely. I want every wrestling blog out there that 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 just uh, got my 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 input of, uh, of Intruso. I want y'all to blast this all over the place. I want y'all to go ahead and tag my podcast to it so he can rewind and listen to what I'm saying. Then when the chance comes, I'm offering you. You want to come on to my podcast? Let's do this, man. And hope to God. Hope to God when you when you say something, put my family's name in your mouth. <laughs> you know what happened. Understand this. I was Samoan before I'm a wrestler. You know what type of reputation we got. You got any final words, Big Keish? <laughs> I got I got Keish. I, I apologize, I, Big Keish. <laughs> you know, I usually say it's free to be kind to one yeah, another. Yes, sir. You know, I could probably use that right now, but this is just, you know, as a father, you never want to hear things like that to be disrespected towards your family, especially when you don't know the 411 of what a person has went through. And so, hey, I'm going to say it. it's free to be kind to one another. But, hey, Vince Russo, smarten up. <laughs>